and welcome to Comic Beat Insider, the weekly live stream YouTube podcast about movies, comics, TV, and things that we watch uh, while we're going through a global pandemic. I'm Heidi McDonald, the editor-in-chief of The Beat at comicsbeat.com. And I am Jimmy Aquino, the host producer of the weekly podcast since 2005, Comic News Insider at comicnewsinsider.com. Therese. And uh, I am Therese Laxman. I am the entertainment editor at Comics Beat, and I'm also the uh, co founding editor of Nerdophiles. And our very special guest this week. <laughs> I'm Jay Edden. I'm a writer, editor, and um, half of the podcast, Jay and Miles Explain the X Men. So awesome. Okay, well, you, this... have, you have two minutes, Jay. Explain the X-Men. I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> um, He's like, there's like here. they live in a house. No, they're on an island now. I don't know. There's like a bunch How of many houses, years right? have you been doing this podcast? <laughs> Seven as of this week. And, awesome. and what issue Fire. are you up to? Seven as of now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That'd be no, amazing. We've, we've, we've hit, um, we're, we're in the 330s and uncanny, but um, oh. we're at the part of the 90s where there are just more and more and more series branching fractally. Oh. So we've, oh, we've yeah. sort of slowed down to a crawl uh, i think we're, we're so just much. about to hit onslaught which part oh, the, we, uh, are you gonna uh, give up and quit yeah no, i was gonna true. say this is you this is the part we most need explained i feel yeah. <laughs> so anyway i brought you all together today to discuss perhaps still the most divisive <laughs> film we've ever talked about here on comic beat insider ever ever the 2008 live action live action Speed Racer, directed by the Wachowskis. And like when I mentioned this on Twitter the other day, I got a thousand likes from people who said they love the movie, which is like the most response I've ever gotten to something. <laughs> uh, and yet there are still people who do not understand that this is one of the transcendent masterpieces of film. Why? I don't <laughs> I, I think it's incredibly, incredibly easy for people to be wrong. Yeah, absolutely. That's well, what, it, what it comes down to. Well, I have a lot of theories about this, uh, having thought, been thinking about it all week, actually, and uh, we'll get into this. But so how we usually start is talking about how we first encountered this film. So I am Speed Racer. The original cartoon was probably my first thing that I was conscious of in life besides my family. <laughs> it was my favorite thing. And uh, I remember what, you know, of course, it played on TV in the afternoons. And, uh, you know, I remember I, mean, I was very young, uh, but building up to the secret of Racer X and, you know, the big race. And I remember my family decided that afternoon to go out and go shopping. And when I came home, <laughs> I discovered I'd missed that episode. And I specifically remember throwing the worst tantrum I ever threw in my life, like lying on the floor, screaming, I missed it. I missed it. Like lying on the floor, crying. And oh like, God. like specifically, I specifically remember that I was not ever going to stop. I was just going to let everything out about this. I was never going to hold back. You know, my, <laughs> My mother wisely decided to just let it play itself out. She saw that I was having a breakdown and, you know, that Open was the window, it. window, close the door, yeah, lock it. Yeah, I'll yeah. come back I mean, in hours. I mean, I was probably sick to my stomach. I cried so hard. Wow. Um, and then, because this is how they did it in syndication, when you started watching it again, every time Racer X showed up, they say, Racer X, who was oh, secretly they, Speed's brother. It. It's like as if this was a new story. I love that every time he came on, it was this long, yeah. like, 12-hour, like, race race, six is a dead brother, right? He didn't go to his family. What a jerk. Why would he tell his family he's dead? That's really not cool. I think it's <laughs> right, long, long right, you know? right. Like, loved and it, loved it. so I, I loved it so much. I had little driving gloves that my, my family bought, and my mother oh, had to tell me. Adorable. Yeah, except my mother had told me, Heidi, you've got to take them off. Your your hands are rotting, and I took them off, and they smelled so bad inside. I I don't know how long I'd been wearing them, probably days. Wow. <laughs> so, and to this day, I actually have a pair of racing gloves, but I could not find them for this podcast. So anyway, so I love Speed Racer. Just everything about it was all for me. And so when the movie came out, I was really looking forward to it. 
And I'll just say briefly, because I know we're going to talk a lot about the film, that as I sat in the theater, I've never been so happy, never felt so perfectly at peace in the world. Uh, in fact, it's one of the significant times in my life where I was just like, this is where I belong. And it just went right into my eyeballs and into my brain and created this happy, happy, happy place. Now, my ex-husband, who I went to see it with, did not feel the same way and was so <laughs> incensed by the film that he walked out halfway through. Oh, ridiculous. Something, and that's your ex-husband. That's, that's yeah, yeah. my ex-husband. But That's the I, night we got a divorce. <laughs> and But I do have some thoughts about why he reacted so negatively to this film, which I'll get to later. Um, and anyway, I loved it. And now, surprisingly, I did not watch it again until this viewing it for this, this very podcast. And, uh, of course, I had great thoughts about it. And it's so controversial. You know, it was a huge flop, a huge bomb, and, you know, critically reviled. And, uh, but I remember a name drop clonk about to name drop, but uh, I was at Book Expo right after it came out and I was talking to Kazu Kibuishi mm -hmm. and we're, I said, you know, I really like Speed Racer. It's like, yeah, I really liked it too. And then Brian Selznick, uh, the author of Hugo Cabret was sitting nearby and he was like, you know, I really liked it too. <laughs> so, um, you know, I, I knew someday this film would <laughs> have its, due. would have its due. And here we are in, in 2021 to give it that moment. So nice. that's my speed racer story. <laughs> well, amazing it's, seeing it kind of emerge as not even so much a cult classic, like getting actual mainstream recognition abruptly in the last maybe five years. Well, because yeah, there's been, there's been this major, major sea change. Okay. Well, I want to, I want to, I definitely want to, I want to dive into that yeah. because, because I think it's like the trajectory of this film is fascinating. Yeah. Um, yeah, but Jimmy, what was your first time? So I was a huge Speed Racer fan as a kid. We didn't we didn't have the luxury of having it on in the afternoon. For some reason, one of the local stations put it on at seven a.m. Oh, and I didn't God, have school until so cool. I know I didn't have school until nine thirty. But I fucking got up to watch. <laughs> and if something was wrong with the TV, I'd wake my mom up. She'd be pissed. I'm like, TV's like Speed Racer's on. I want to watch it. You know, like to bang the TV so it'll work. Um, pre cable days, kids, and um, but yeah, I would get up and watch it. I loved it all. I loved, uh, even though I, it, then I didn't know what dubbing was, probably. You know, I'm like, I thought the voices were ridiculous and funny, and I loved it, you know. And um, I just really got into it. Yeah, you know, we used to draw the Mach 5, we try to figure out all the buttons were, you know, what they meant. Oh, what we learned. Yes. Like, that one means this, that one means that, you know. We'd have debates at school about it, you know, and um. Uh, I just loved it. But for some reason, I think it was because it came and went in the theaters. I didn't see it. I think I was oh, away no. at, a, at a convention in the theaters. And then when I came back, it was just like gone. <laughs> you know, and it was like, and then I just kind of forgot about it. And when I was in England, God, 10 years ago, I don't know. Um, could it be 10 years ago? Yeah. And uh, I was at a friend's house. And we started to watch it, but I was so jet lagged. I fell asleep like, <laughs> like within 20 minutes on the couch watching it. But I remember this is really fun. And he had the video game. We played the next one. I love the video game. It was on the Nintendo Wii, I think it was. And really fun. And I was like, okay, I'm going to just buy this when I get back. And then forgot about it. And so I've watched it fully for the first time twice this week. And <laughs> I fucking loved it. <laughs> oh, my God. What a, like a sensory for the eyes, the ears, the everything. And, uh, yeah, I really, really loved it. We'll get into it. My only slight thing was a little long. But besides that, loved it, loved it. And Therese? Um, so unlike you two, I did not grow up watching Speed Racer. Uh, I ba basically had no idea what it was until the movie came out. But I knew about the movie. I knew I wanted to go see it because the lead, Emil Hirsch, um, I was a really big fan of his. He is very dreamy. Um, and I had a big sure. crush on him when I was a teenager, when this came out. Um, like I said, we will mention, I had a crush on basically like all of these actors. <laughs> the <old cast>. um, <laughs> yeah, like I was like, okay, yeah, this makes sense why I liked it. Um, I don't think I even knew that the Wachowski did it because I don't think at that point I was paying attention to, to directors. But I had obviously grown up loving the Wachowskis because I am a huge Matrix nerd. Mm. Um, so... I just remember seeing that movie for the first time. I went to movies quite often alone. I've always gone to movies alone because Same I thing. am a talker. 
And <laughs> if nobody's next to me, that means I can stay quiet. Like, honestly, nobody wants to be next to me during a movie. I have a lot of opinions. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> so that was my first experience. And I remember seeing it and being like, oh, my God, this movie is wild. Like, the colors were wild. I already know the things that I didn't like about it. I still don't like about it. Most of that comes down to a certain character's performance. Um, but it, I, I mean, it just blew Don't my mind. Don't pick on First Chim all, Chim like that, all right? Yeah, Chim Chim was good. <laughs> Listen, that's not even a joke. Chim Chim was a part of this, like, the oh. things that I didn't like about it. <laughs> I don't like children in movies. I'm sorry. All like, right. make Maybe that makes me a psychopath. I don't care. Um, <laughs> no. Yeah, I remember the reveal for Reese or X, and I was like, <gasps> like I was 16 at the time. I definitely watched. I was like, oh my God, like I need to talk to somebody about this. But obviously I don't think anybody in my group had watched like the movie yet. So I was just like, I, this is amazing. So I, when I watched it again this week, I was like, oh my God, isn't this dude his brother? And I had to Google it because I was like, I feel like <laughs> did I imagine it? Did I make that up? But yeah, so that was my experience. It was all kind of a fever dream, but you know. <laughs> yeah, makes sense. <laughs> Jay? So I like Teresa, I saw the movie before I'd seen the cartoon and I'm, I am a huge Speed Racer fan. I can sort of show you my Mach 5. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but, so my intro point was the movie and it was a couple of years after it had come out in theaters. Um, it just sort of passed me by when it was on theaters because I didn't have any nostalgia attached to it. And I liked the Wachowskis, but I wasn't an obsessed enough fan to go, oh, they've got a new movie out. I have to go see it. So I saw it because a friend had had told my now X, yeah, you guys haven't seen this. You have to see it. I'll lend you my copy. And saw it and fell instantly and irrevocably in love with it. And watched it a ton, went back, watched the entire cartoon. Um, I'm honestly, wow. I'm not sure if there's a movie I've oh seen God. more times than Speed Racer at this wow. point. Maybe oh. The Princess Bride, because when I was about 10, a friend and I used to watch it every Wednesday. But <laughs> oh, amazing. Wow. Yeah, it was it was a weird habit, and I'm not sure how we started that or why, but it, it was just what we did. Like, we'd go over to our house and watch The Princess Bride. As um, a kid, you'd watch movies over and over again all the time, for sure. Yeah, I think I did yeah. that. Yeah, and as an, adult, as an adult, I there were movies that I've seen multiple times, but none that I've gone out of my way to see again and again as much as mm -hmm. this one. Um, I really, really love it. I think I... Yeah, as, as other people have said, I think it's a it's with with a couple of glaring notes. It's a very close to perfect film. Mm. Um, I I love what it does. I love how different it is from any other adaptation I've ever seen, and I love the way it specifically approaches adaptation. Like having seen the cartoon afterwards, was I think a really cool way to go about it. First of all, because I was an unbelievable snob as a little kid so I don't think I would have appreciated it <laughs> um, <laughs> like I grew up in kind of a pop culture vacuum and my my response to that and like way to justify it to my peers was just to try to be way too mature for it which I you know what I feel that I had kind the same, of I've, I've I outgrown since <laughs> like I get to enjoy things now which is nice um but also because watching the tv show after seeing the movie meant that I had this incredibly detailed lens into what details they picked up and the way they yeah. patched it together. Mm, and yeah. the movie isn't a direct adaptation of any, any single episode or any single story, but it pulls from almost every episode of the cartoon. Lots of homage. It's got all sure, of these yeah. resonant moments mm. that just sort of come together. And it's, oh God, it's so, it's, I, I love that movie a lot. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, it's like Dick Tracy meets Wacky Races meets Scott Pilgrim meets I don't know. It's like, yeah, but, uh, but you know, I, all these things. But I do. I I I mean, I'll just get my main thesis out of the way. I do think that uh, the Wachowskis went into it, um, and this movie is so smart. That's the thing. It's like everybody says how dumb it was, you know, what a dumb cartoon it was. But it's so smart. Like the script is is you know so intentional. And and then just the visuals. I mean, every single second of this is is a, a storytelling clinic, you know. Um, but I do think, you know, there's a lot of talk about how CGI, our brain, you know, bad CGI, our brains just it doesn't it doesn't have any impact on us. 
And uh, I would compare this movie to Mad Max Fury Road for exactly opposite reasons. You know, when I walked out of Mad Max Fury Road, which my ex-husband loved, by the way, and we were both like, ah, oh, I can't believe I, I went through that because it's real and you feel the physics of it. So this movie, I think they purposely, you know, having done so much with CGI in the Matrix trilogy, I think they purposely understood that our brains don't take CGI as real. And they said, let's make this let's play that up. Let's make this as hypertropic and delirious and perfectly unreal as we possibly can. And I think that's why I loved it so much. I think, you know, among other, I mean, I think this movie specifically impacts our brains and, uh, and, and that's why if you love it, you love it. And if you don't, I, I, I think it's just like something that you, I don't know, it's, it's grating to people. I feel, I feel. It's, it's an aggressively synesthetic movie in ways mm -hmm. that I could see mm -hmm. being really overwhelming. And a lot of the people I know who dislike it have talked about sort of that sense of just sensory overload and kind of sensory assault as being a reason for it. I think what you said about CGI is kind of critical to how it works because the I've, I've, I've heard people mention, you know, the Uncanny Valley. And I think the Uncanny Valley is a place that, that only makes sense if you're shooting for realism. Mm. And Speed Racer very clearly isn't. A while ago, I was on a podcast and we were trying to come up with a term for it. And we ended up coining the term trans, uh, transrealism, which is where you go, you, you're so far past realism and past hyperrealism that you emerge into an entirely separate space. Because it's, it's not trying to be real. It's not trying to be more real than real. But the way that it achieves what it does is to just dial everything that we think of as realism up beyond any reasonable reality. I, I bought it all as real, so I don't know, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> loved it. Loved yeah, it. I feel like I feel like just to touch on the whole like the Mad Max thing. First of all, Heidi, I thought you were going to say that you did not like Mad Max. And I was <laughs> yeah. like, well, we are going to like this. Oh, no. Oh, no, this like, <laughs> no, no, my favorite, my favorite. Yes, my other yeah. favorite. Yeah, um, it reminded me kind of like to that point about the uh the trans realism it reminded me kind of of the dread movie that came out of like yes. how the way they shot that was like you know the way they did the effects of the um i can't remember what the drug is but like where it's like super sparkly and stuff that kind of like is a very low-key version of what is happening in speed racer which is just like everything is turned up to 10 i do feel like it is kind of like a movie you either really enjoy or a movie you probably get a migraine from mm. um i definitely got that feeling when i was watching i was like this is this is a younger therese appreciated this a lot more than an older <laughs> therese sitting here in the darkness but i mean just the like explosion the literal explosion of color is just i mean if you enjoy colorful movies and like the way that people style things like it's just they did not hold back at all and like they didn't hold back with the effects like i feel like there's a lot of things I didn't appreciate when I was first watching this that I was, you know, when I was watching it this week, I was like, oh my God, I didn't even notice like when they're speeding and the, there's like, you know, the effects on the side of the road with like zebras running. And I was yeah. like, this, <laughs> this is amazing. Like, why don't we talk about this movie more? I mean, I do have some thoughts about the heads like constantly being in motion on the TV. I felt like that was a little bit ridiculous, but probably an homage. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's, it's a movie that I feel like you either love or hate, like, you know, just by, by the way that it's presented, like you can't really, it's kind of like hard to form a middling opinion about it. Uh, I yeah. think, I think it definitely was very influential no matter what critics thought of it, because I mentioned Scott Pilgrim, it came out after this and I guarantee you, oh Edgar yeah, right. Was influenced by this movie. And we talk about, you know, some of the cast we'll talk about soon, but like rain was a giant K-pop star uh, oh in there, but like, look at the K-pop videos today it looks like a long k-pop video <laughs> like it's like it's a way it's, it's like this beautiful like it's just like watch a current k-pop video it's just like n all this madness of color and costuming and all this stuff going on it's it's really great it's really, really you great. Know, yeah i mean we're definitely living in an, an even more digital world than it was in 2008 yeah. and um, you know, like these kind of, you know, trans realism, which is a great phrase. Let's just all use it and, and give yeah. Jay uh, credit for it. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, is everywhere. Also another film that is, that has a trans realism, I think is Sin City. 
Yeah. You know, which yeah, was yeah. a few years earlier. Yeah, a few years earlier, yeah. 2005. And, and, you know, if we look, you know, a lot of people are going back and looking at the aughts now. And um, this period of, you, you know, they're definitely, you know, comic book movies definitely took over in the aughts. And, and I think, you know, Sin City was hugely influential, obviously. And um, I mean, 300 even. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, Yeah, 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 absolutely. And, uh, uh, you know, of course, after the original Matrix came out, everything ripped it off so much that I mean, I can't imagine what it's like to be a kid, um, cough, cough, uh, and not, you know, have seen the matrix and been like oh that's awesome because now it's, it's it's like going back and watching citizen kane it's like you have no idea how groundbreaking it was when it came out but um it still holds it up though like, yeah. you've seen it referenced so many times that you recognize every beat of it yeah yeah yeah, yeah. it came out the, the big summer movie 99 yeah that was uh i was away i was away doing west side story and like the cast went to the movies every <laughs> week right. and we we probably saw Matrix six or seven times when we were away <laughs> because it also South Park the musical came out, mm. uh, Phantom Menace came out, uh, Wild Wild West, which came and went. <laughs> um, so, but it was like a big, big summer movie a uh, year for sure. Well, just to, before we start talking specifically about Speed Racer, I want to say one other thing. It opened the same week as the first Iron Man movie. Oh, and there, you, and, went. and there yeah. you have yeah. it. You know, um, or if it, yeah, or it might have opened the week after, but it came out right at the time Iron Man came out, hmm. and there you have the story. <laughs> Your two paths diverged. Yeah. And That's funny because I remember watching this movie in theaters. I don't think i remember watching iron man in theaters oh i, I remember. may have watched it later on but i really distinctly remember going to go see oh, wow. speed racer yeah i did like, iron man in theaters but i yeah miss, miss speed so anyway so let's 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 talk about the story and i want to get to these elements that bother everyone because that is of course very important um and... oh, i think i think real quick there's a uh, um some of the early casting uh, before we got to the cast, we got you know who was. Involved. Oh yeah, this movie this was in the around works for like, two, two decades, nineteen yeah. like in the nineties. So we yeah. had like early development had Johnny Depp as Speed, Henry Rollins as Tracer X. Works uh, for me. Yeah, directors yeah. came and went, including like Julian Temple, Gus Van Sant, Alfonso Cuarón, Hype Williams. Later, Vince <laughs> Vaughn got involved. He wanted to play Racer X. I'm um, so glad Alfonso Cuarón did not do this movie. I love yeah, him, right. but like it was yeah. a very different movie. And even in the Wachowski's version early on, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, Zach Efron, Shia LaBeouf were all considered for Speed, uh, Alicia Cuthbert, uh, Kate Mara, Rose McGowan for Trixie, Rollins was again approached, well, they really wanted Rollins, was again approached for Racer X. Um, so yeah, it, had, it went through, like any film, goes through a lot of like different casting and, and everything like that. Mm. But, but the cast they came to, like Teresa was saying, my God, I mean, from the bottom to the top, it is stacked. Rain, and rain, I know. and just rain. And, it's, and it is perfect. It is perfect. You know, they found God. the one kid who could completely replicate the feeling of a young Corey Feldman. And what's funny, he was 13 at the time. He just, I guess, had a late growth spurt because he was a little tinier. Um, but yeah, he was 13 years old. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, he's so taking should be, off should be an on, on you know, Corey Feldman or, in um, Lost yeah. Boys. Yeah. You know, like which, which I mean, his performance is he has a little resemblance to Corey too. Oh yeah, yeah. Like, oh, but I mean, yeah. it's I, I I totally got a Corey Feldman vibe from from that. So now, anyway, all right. Well, as we talk about the story, I'm sometimes lose the details. So Jay and Jimmy, I'm sure you're really good at it. So <laughs> feel free to jump in and sure. correct me as we go through this film because uh, you know I watched it last night one time and you know I was just I, I literally like it just went like and I was I sometimes I look at my watch when I'm watching things and i was like oh it's over wow yeah. um but anyway it, we meet yeah it can help when you're breaking it down if you think of it as three arcs each of which is organized around one race yes mm-hmm. that's true like, that's that's sort of how i that's the way i figured out finally to keep track of it ah, so nice. so we do open with speed racing uh as <laughs> as uh, we we see and <laughs> it's uh, in the title it is in the title and you know it's all there and if you saw the cartoon you know the round helmet the the goggles i mean it's just you know and emil hirsch is speed racer um and we immediately see that this movie is not going to treat racing like it's real it's all like colorful 
you know, speeding backgrounds and just, I mean, the visuals, they just speak for themselves in this. Um, and then now, actually, I don't remember how we segue. We flash back to, to speed when he was it's, little. It's, it's, it's a little kind of a. Yeah, and it's like the, he, his his yes. leg is like is like he's sort of like bouncing his leg. Then we go back to him flashing back, bouncing his leg or something like that, right? Yeah. And yeah. Uh, what, what's great is like we immediately get because uh, the Wachowski had bought the rights to the TV and uh, show music and sound yes, effects. Yes, of course. So we get that on early mm -hmm. and throughout the whole film, not just the not just the song, which we all know. But even though, like the when they mock five jumps, you get the, you know, which is oh, thank great. God. <laughs> um, but yeah, but yeah, music so, so we hear the music right away early on, with the, like sort of the background. Dun, 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 dun. I'm like, yes, <laughs> you feel yes. it right away. And yeah, we do a flashback, and and there's I forgot the actor playing speed, but who's well, little, who's little Trixie, little Ariel Winter, yeah, from, well, uh, the, Modern Family, right, yeah. Well, it's yeah. funny that you forgot the actor because it's Scott Porter. No, right? no, he well, no, he's no, he's Scott Rex. Rex. Young Speed, Rex. right? Young Speed, he's, right? He's, young he's, Speed, he's yeah, young yeah. Rex. Scott yeah. Young Rex. Yeah, okay. Young, young, young Speed is Jason Street. Is, Friday Night like, Lights fans, I yeah. see you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Young Speed was Nicholas uh, Elia. He doesn't. He hasn't really done much uh, uh, after that. He did a little bit, but he hasn't been active in years. But yeah, but Little Trixie was Ariel Winter from Modern Family. Yeah. Yes, very cute. So but cute. you know, we see the Racer family is a family built around racing you know there's pops uh, which is played by john goodman perfect mom played by susan sarandon, susan sarandon. just you know the most loving man uh, yeah. mom you could possibly imagine and yes uh, scott porter as rex racer the oldest racer uh brother and uh, you know i guess I, I feel like it isn't talked about but but given the timing i feel like spritel might have been like you know after rex, baby an accident yeah. baby <laughs> who's yeah. sort of like okay well Oopsie. rex is gone and yeah. and let's bring another <laughs> child <Yeah. laughs> you know let's have another son um it was a mistake to bring spritel into the world yes, <laughs> Oh, uh oh! We have some anti-spritel sentiment here. I oh yeah, mean, he's like huge I'm anti. Oh, kind of with, with her. But, oh oh yeah. no, spritel is perfect. I think it's the actor that. Bought I him. told yeah, you, I Jim. Like, Jim. <laughs> Uh, I don't, I don't so mind. I don't mind kids. Got over that uh, phase in the eighties and nineties. No. Like, oh god, every child. I'm not anti-child movie, but this one. For well, me. <laughs> you know, I have to mention Scott Porter because Jimmy. Oh, he's do you great. But oh. do you remember when we did karaoke with him? Yeah, and, yeah I, I, and, I hung out with him all night. We like shared a cab home together. Had because we had a mutual friend. He had worked with Bria on Friday Night Lights. Yeah. So, we had, so we had we ended up hanging out, going to like breakfast later, and like and hanging to like five. Yeah, we did that Marvel party. Yes. We Kales, it was that weird private room that the wall opened up. Oh, yeah. We like this. Yes, so they this... were like doing karaoke, and me and Scott are like doing a duet. I'm like, what's happening? You know, I know. Like, yeah. Really fun. Really fun. He's really nice. <laughs> and He's then every, and nice I, I and I didn't know who he was because I'd never seen Friday Night Lights. Oh. So, I, you know, so I it's thought, fine. oh, this guy is cute for sure. And yeah. like everyone is like kowtowing to fawning him. And then, I, him yeah. and then fawning over him. And then I was like, and you know, we were hanging out, and he was actually, he was super nice. He's so nice. Yeah. He's really very, very nice. And um, yeah, and then I. I was like, uh, oh, the guy, I guess he was on TV. And I was like, oh, oh yeah, well. he's coming in the room right now. Let him in. I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? So years ago, in 2018, like, I was trying to get traction for an oral history of Speed Racer. And it was oh. just before people were starting to notice it again. And the only person I could, and it was when I was writing for Wired. So I was like, I could do the, you know, I'm doing this for a legitimate outlet you've heard of. The only person who would talk about the movie at all was Scott Porter. Amazing. Oh my God. Oh, so, and who unfortunately wasn't a big enough name on his own attached to it to get traction, yeah. but like he talked for like no. an hour and a half, two hours, and he's he loves that move this movie so much. Oh, oh nice. God bless him. He yeah. uh, he's great. All right, Scott yeah. Porter, you are okay. you're the best, dude. Right you're on. The dude. Um, so you know, I'm I'm I thinking about it. I realized that some of the details of the story have just like the the synesthesia of this movie just <laughs> I drove it out of my mind. Yeah. So, um, but but we learn that uh, that you know that that Rex and Speed have this incredibly close relationship, and you know he's taking him off to race, and uh, and then there's a tragic race, and mm -hmm. Rex loses his right. life, and the family is of course devastated by this. But Speed is continuing on with the with the family tradition of racing. Yeah, and we see him racing like his little car when he's a, and we also see Trixie New early Trixie was like that's my man like <laughs> early on she was like that is my punches a girl in the face for talking shit about him it was great yeah <laughs> like that's my boy uh-uh 
<laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I, I did hear the nuclear family of this movie is quite unusual. You know, they have, um, you know, Sparky the mechanic living with them and Trixie, who is not yeah. the sister, you <laughs> yeah. know. Oh, no, she's <laughs> a love interest, yeah. Love interest, but she just lives with them anyway. Yeah, so. that's, that was never explained. Why is she living with them? I was like, and the parents don't really care like okay yeah your girlfriend can live with us okay yeah well she didn't seem to come out of his room though did she did she maybe she had like her own no No, she came out of the the backyard yeah yeah so i was like where did she come from i thought she didn't live with them i thought she was just always there that's what i that's yeah that's what i thought too i didn't think she i was like and like spent too much time with the like the uh, the family next door instead of like her own parents Uh, probably like i think that's what it was yeah maybe i mean yeah she could have just i mean we don't see where trixie sleeps no so maybe Presumably has her own life. She's got a helicopter. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Which I She's wish got the helicopter more about. life. Like, yeah. where did this helicopter come from? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so right. obsession, like speeds obsession with cars, she probably had with helicopters as a kid. You know, and and but but you know, with all this opening season where we're setting up the story of Rex, uh, and you know, and meeting all these characters, and then we meet Spritel, who has Chim Chim, who is a chimpanzee, and so you know, this family is obviously very loose with who comes to hang out and you know and chim chim is another child i mean him and spritel uh do function as siblings and um yeah you know, there were there were two chimps that played chim chim and apparently there was a small little sad bit of animal cruelty that happened because i guess one of the chim chims uh unprovokingly bit the spritel stand in and the trainer smacked him Fact that no. yeah, so, uh, when people saw people are like, oh, so it was a big deal. They obviously they made a big thing out of it, like, yeah. So, this you know, movie like, did yeah. not get the ASPCA yeah. stamp yeah. approval, which yeah. is which is, I mean, it's a great, it's a great yeah. performance. Now, now, you know, from remembering the cartoons, I guess you know, the audio of it, I mean, I didn't know what anime was, obviously, as a small child, I knew there was something different about this, mm-hmm. and you know, I later quickly segued into Ultraman and Johnny Sako and every other piece of j- Japanese culture that was on TV. But, uh, you know, the sound of it's, ah, speed, yeah, no, chim, chim, no, damn, no, no, well, yeah, you know, it's just like those. And the idea was like overacting, like, tricky, oh, you know, like. <laughs> half, the, half the voices right. were the same person. And he, right? Yeah. Well, and well, he also did almost all of the localization. Yeah. On the show and decided that he was just going to try to have the dialogue actually match the mouse. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Which were which had no relation <laughs> to the story. Yeah, so yeah. you've got this super fast, ridiculous pattern because Dan Fernandez was, was just like, "Yes, I'm gonna run with this." Yeah. <laughs> yes, and actually, in the first racing scene, we d- see all these announcers talking about it, That's and so Peter great. Fernandez is one Peter of them. Fernandez, sorry, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And as yeah. is the um, and also the yeah. voice, the original voice of Trixie is also mm-hmm. one of the announcers. Yeah, right. And and yeah. we also, I love that that establishes just that in this world. Uh, which is super racing centric, but racing is huge. You know, like yeah. people are hanging on every turn. I mean, racing is huge in this world too. Well, it like is. Yeah, America, yeah. NASCAR. I mean, in 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 Europe, the uh, Formula Grand One. Prix, yeah, it's like yeah, it's pretty big all over worldwide too. But yeah, Formula One. Nice. Formula One. That's what it is. Formula okay. One. Okay, it's a little like John yeah, Wick, yeah. and that yeah. it's the whole world sort of organized around this one peculiar thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So we also have the... Richard Roundtree as oh, an announcer. They're yes. great, Richard Roundtree. Yes. Awesome. Yes. Yeah. Um. So then uh, we introduce the the villain of the film, uh, yeah. Royalton. Royalton, uh, who's who's played by an English actor who's like Christopher Hitchens crossed with Albert yes. Finney, right? Yeah. It's like. Uh, you know, a little Tim Curry in there, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I thought he was really good, but he's great. I mean, Roger, Roger he's Allen. He's, uh, Roger he's Allen, also yeah. in uh, V for Vendetta too, I think. Also, oh, as a mm-hmm. another very mean uh, British man. So he I does think. have that look. Yeah. Yeah, um, I'm yeah. pretty sure it's it's him. I'm looking right now. Let's. See. I know. I'm gonna Google it. Yeah, but that I was also I, that was another Joel Silver Wachowski movie because they produced that. So. When was V? When did that it was out? just before. It was just before this came out. Actually, oh, I don't see yeah. it. I don't yeah. see Yeah, it, it was just yeah, before. Yeah, but uh, so he's you know sees Speed's talent and uh wants to bring him onto the Royalton racing team. And you know we see the great luxurious uh you know corporate world uh that the Royaltons offer. He, he oh gives, yeah, he did do V. Sorry, he, he, did he yeah, gives yeah. Speed a, a purple suit that he looks really hot in and um you know winds and dies his family and uh says all right i do not have the same hubba hubba that's a bad suit (laughs) (laughs) see i like purple Purple and brown is not a good yeah i like purple too but i was like yeah i was like 
when like she's like hubba hubba i'm like is she seeing the same suit i am well in <laughs> those hey in the aughts the single tone suits were a big thing that was the fashion at the time if you recall um jay where do you stand on the purple suit i'm kind of neutral on the purple suit i think <laughs> So I'm sorry. I, I feel like the purple suit has has so much in the way of plot semiotics that the actual design of it was kind of lost on me. Because <laughs> it's it's total it's totally the sellout suit. It's the the this yeah. is how you would look if you joined me as a superhero. Yeah. Well, yeah, and that's and what makes a, it ugly too. Yes, like, yeah, that, that's a great represents. point. And also the color choice. I like. All it. right, I it's a bad suit. The texture of it, like it's some. Well, kind of, I mean, it's, it, it's it's some kind of textured material, and I remember thinking that that was a good detail. And his name is Royalton, which of course the yeah. purple's the purple, royalty, yeah. you know, so that's why he's always wearing purple. And like mm -hmm. his freaking factory is ridiculous and awesome. He's such a cookie cutter <laughs> villain, but yeah. it's so great. It's oh, really really was was. I love it. Yeah, it's like it's just I love oh, it. Oh, I forgot they flew them on the private jet. And while yeah. on the private jet, Chim Chim and Spritel are entranced by the fact that they bring out a candy tray for them. And that just, is it's like a candy in... trunk. It's like it's so much. Yes. It's like, oh. yeah. Yeah. Yes. So, so Royalton is pressing speed to sign and, and, you know, obviously they've been given the, you know, this full court press, but, uh, you know, he's like, oh, but I, and that's all, oh, well, you could take a week to think about it. Of course. Yeah, right. Yeah. Just think about it. Oh, it's fine. And so, uh, so, so he does, he goes away to think about it. And, you know, there's a little more family drama, um, yeah. you know, about that. And, mm. um, then we meet, then we meet rain. <laughs> oh, Oh, that's right. Yeah, yes. Rain. Rain's getting beaten at the Very time. Very disappointing by, uh... introduction. I know. Right? I know. It was yeah. a little. Was a wow, little... The first thing we see is we see him getting punched by some white dudes. Like okay, I know. Well... This was a very old. This is not a movie from our time. I can yeah. I can accept that he has a speaking role too. So I'm like, okay, yeah. like he's the main yeah. character. He's the main character, yeah. And like Cruncher Blocks gang is just like speaking of Dick, Dick Tracy. It's like his uh, right out of Dick Tracy. The way they're dressed, the way they act. Yeah, yeah, it's really great. And then like <laughs> the prods in the background. That's so great. But yeah, we we meet Rain, the, the giant. Like I said, he he just done a film before the year before that was pretty big. And this led him to start doing like then the year after he did Ninja Assassin. He started getting more film roles. It felt like he should have kept going i don't know what happened with the film crazy because like, he's starting to come back now but it's like i feel like he could have been a lot bigger i don't know what happened but um yeah so we were introduced to him getting beaten by this gang because he's a driver and, also and we learned that there's a lot of politics a lot yeah. of behind the scenes skullduggery in yeah. the racing world and uh and then we have this great scene between speed and his mom mm -hmm. and i thought that was one of the key film moments in the film and she's just talking very about sweet very sweet but she's also says you know when i watch you do things out there yeah. it's like art you know yeah. and she and she is and i think that's actually one of the the key moments in the film uh because there is the, you know the film is about family we know that and it's also very anti-corporate uh, another yeah. message that the wachowskis often have in their films um but it's also i think the, the i think that's explaining the kind of the meaning of the whole film that 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 this is a you know it's art racing is art this is some kind of experience that is more than just um you know driving a car around in a circle this is like so much bigger and so much more meaningful and that's why it has this incredible visual spectacle to it you know i think that's what was kind of like like justifying part of part of the way they approach the racing in this film yeah well you know you want to talk about like trans realism i feel like this is like the extreme version of like a sports movie right like i mm, always feel yeah. like i do not really love i don't really love watching sports sometimes i find it to be boring obviously sometimes i don't but um i've always said like give me any like add a storyline add some slow motion add like a background score i am there for it like you add the drama that's like everybody's gonna get into it and this is just dreams. the extreme yeah. version of that but i yeah but i i think when when you know speed's mom gives him that whole speech about it being art i think i think it it explains that we're not really it's not really a sporting event mm -hmm. this is like it's like kung fu you know, but it captures like, the spirit of it. Yes, like, you it, know, it, like that. It, it like, does. Even though you know that he's going to win, you're still like, oh my God, like, how yeah. is this going to end? You yeah. Know? yeah. Yes. And to bring that to way back to like the first the race, race, he actually didn't beat his own brother's record. Like when that right. happened, it's like, that's that like an added little like bit of heart where you're like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like, I'm sorry. I feel I'm, that. I'm sorry, Jay. What were you? 
Well, the whole the whole arc of the movie is about Speed's sort of identity as a racer too, and kind of racing being not only what he does but who he is. And what you said about about him. Sorry, Mike. There's about to be something very very loud from here because <laughs> the because this is a house where sound carries oddly, and so the phone mm. just sort of screams <laughs> oh. and then does caller ID announcements. It's great. That's all right. It's okay. It's okay. We're, but, we look. At, we just do. We just roll. We just roll with but it. My yeah. my. Um, but so at the beginning, you know, you mentioned him pulling short to avoid beating Rex's track record. And the first two races are races where he's very much and sometimes visually, literally basically driving in Rex's shadow. Mm. And the, the arc of the movie for me, a lot of it as far as speed is about speed finding his own identity as a racer. And mm. as, you know, like you said, as an artist in terms of that and his, his, his relationship to what he does as something independent from just following in his brother's footsteps mm-hmm. and his family's footsteps, and his yeah. family's footsteps, yeah. Because his, you know, the the he when he's talking to to Royalton later on before one of the greatest villain speeches of all time, um, he, he <laughs> yeah. talks about how racing is kind of almost a religion for his family. It's just sort of how they live. Well, the, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, he does. He comes back to meet with Royalton with a paper bag in his hand, yeah. and. <laughs> Um, and he tells the story, another scene that is so key to the whole movie. And he talks about what racing means to him and his family. And he talks about how after Rex died, uh, his father went into a deep depression until one night he comes out and his father is watching a replay of the 43 pre uh, with these two racers. So they know the outcome. And and he says that even though we knew what was going to happen, we both were yell, jumping up and yelling, go Burns, go Burns. And, you know, it cuts to this black and white footage of racing. Now, I don't know if they did that for this movie or they found, there's, there's some <laughs> old footage where you can see they repurposed it, but, um, you know, like took existing footage and repurposed it. But it was you know, like 43 when, like 1943. Yeah, 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 yeah. like, you know, the background and details of this movie are so, are so like, there's so much else going on. Every time they mention something, it's very meaningful. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, it's a beautiful scene. And then, at, you know, Speed says, after that happened, my father came back to life. And, you know, that's why racing is so important. And, he says, then you know, Royalton that reveals his dick. That's shit. why I can't <laughs> join Royalton. And then so Jay, bad. Jay, tell us what happens. Oh, God. Again, one of the greatest villain speeches it is of all time. Um, so great. Royalton gets up and gives this speech about how racing is fixed and racing has always been fixed. And it's just about the money. And he has this twisted wrecked engine that he paid for in his office. And it ends with him with him pointing to this this wrecked engine and saying, this is the true heart of reason, boy. <laughs> this is my religion. Yeah, yeah. Talk about it's crushing so kids good. Brain. It's yeah. literally in front of it. Like, mm-hmm. wow. Everyone... He just told me this really deep story about his family being rebuilt yeah. after this horrific tragedy. And he's like, hey, by the way, it's all fake. And that like crash was proof of it. Uh, yeah. And he also yeah. reveals that the pre was fixed, and so yeah. is every Grand Prix. Every and major race. Burns was but, but in, in He wind. does return the ugly suit. He's so that's in a the good paper sign. bag, yes. <laughs> so no one taught him about a garment bag. <laughs> <laughs> he he does not have sufficient respect for royals and tomorrow. I think he was like, he like, doesn't a deserve a garment bag. Like, um, that was probably he can afford like, to get a dry oh, clean. This is respectfully returning it. Like, yeah, yeah. It yeah, yeah, yeah. There is one moment that before that I want to mention was um, we have Trixie and Speed alone in the car. Oh, yes, yes, and yes. This yes, is a really great scene. And at first I thought they were, it was going to be a fake out because they were, it was full of innuendo. In the very beginning, you're like, "Oh, they're gonna sh- they're gonna be talking about like food or something instead." But no, they actually were talking about each other. And then, um, you know, the kiss is about to happen. Then we get, uh, as Jay wait, said earlier, we get. But he says, he says, Trixie, what if I were to win yeah. the Grand Prix? And then yeah. while I was standing there drinking that glass milk. of cool milk, cold, cold milk, milk. Yeah, that milk. cold milk that I were to kiss you, as a million flash bulbs went off, and, and she's then like, "Yeah, that'll work." <laughs> as they're about to lean in. For the kiss. Teresa's Sprite favorite milk. character. Freaking Spritel and Chim Chim, which is an homage to, the, as Jay was saying, the cartoon. They'd always find Spritel and Chim Chim in the trunk. <laughs> it could be a shorter movie. Stow away. 
yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 and by the way, while Royalton is delivering his speech, Spritle and Chim Chim have stowed oh, away yeah. on the private jet and get into the candy and they go they like clean it they out. They go ham on the <laughs> candy town, and then yeah. they go on a sugar binge, a sugar rush, binge, you know, like kill spree. Uh, well, you know, <laughs> destruction, spree of destruction uh, throughout the factory. And I love this one of my favorite shots in the whole movie. Like they suddenly do, and you know, totally Scott Pilgrim. Actually, the whole movie is kind of yeah. based on this shot uh, where they suddenly do this like animated background and outlines of Chim Chim and Spritle and, yeah. you know, fighting mode. Yeah. And oh, it's so good. Hi. Yeah, and- that's also where they see that Royalton is is enabling his drivers to cheat. Cheater. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes, yes, that's right. They they learn that there's there's cheating going on. And then just as Royalton has delivered this this great speech, um, which by the way reminded me, you know, when the this, it's for contest, you know, everyone loved the Matrix. Everyone did not love Matrix Reload and Matrix Revolution. Uh, the I, Wachowski- loved both of those I did too. So did I. I think they're perfect. I think it's a great film trilogy. Um, and then without the rave, but that's fine. But- okay. <laughs> the rave represented hope the for humanity. Yes. Okay. Okay, Hello. Fine, they still can fine. dance. They can still dance. Um, so, uh, it, you know, but I will say, actually, throughout all three movies, there is a tendency to monologue quite a bit. You know, like the architect monologues, you know, God monologues, everybody monologues. And uh, Royalton's monologue totally was so in character. You know, it's a Wachowski, um, you know, staple, I'd say. But uh, but but I loved it. And then they bring in Spritle and Jim Jim, who, you know, in their chocolate smeared, you know, state of disarray. And it says, oh, we found them eating candy. And then Royalton says, get that racer trash out of my building. (laughs) (laughs) He's great. Yeah, he's great. He's like a Shakespearean trained actor. Oh yeah, I I, good. I, I, love I, I loved it. Um, One of the big selling points in the movie is that every single performance is just all in and then some. Like yeah. everyone is acting so completely and so earnestly, and it's a movie that could could easily have ended up self parody if anyone had gone even a little bit tongue in cheek. Mm-hmm. But it's it's so it's played so straight and so intensely. Like the performances line up with the the visuals just in terms of their their intensity yeah Yeah. and um they uh uh, you know the wachowskis wanted to make a family film and uh you know i think that's another reason why no one understood why they wanted to make this colorful family film i think it just nobody was ready for it nobody wanted to accept and you know it was sincere like you're saying jay and and sincerity often is rejected in these starky times it's true well if you think about like a lot of the wachowski's concepts for their films it's you know often kind of like an outlandish concept like they don't often like go like oh let's really hold back you know on our ideas let's really they're always like leaning in but i think it's a strength to their directing and you know the the way that they sort of position their characters because it is true like I don't I can't think of anyone really like phoning it in in really any of their performances like everyone really kind of leans into the character like you can tell that they're very convinced by the story and I'm not just saying in Speed Racer like even and you know like if you think about a show like Sensei like really that concept is kind of insane but I was a huge fan of that show and every single actor on that show was like they they felt their character you know like the same with you know the matrix i mean you can't Mm -hmm. like it's it's really like a strength in the wachowskis like continuously you see them do that and it's i mean it's fantastic yes yeah nobody really like made like it didn't feel like anybody was like oh god i can't believe i'm in this weird movie you know like everybody seemed like they were like i'm into this yeah i'm in this weird movie and this is how we live now (laughs) yeah yeah yeah. (laughs) Yeah, i'm gonna look like this and i'm gonna pull it off even though they're really really silly moments you see like the reactions are they're all in like i love it i love it yeah so but wait let's let's talk though let's let's talk about so uh just dig in a little bit about spritle and chim chim like like was it jar jar for you was it just a jar jar for those who are non spritles spritle spritle erasure spritle erasure i love jar jar beings believe it or not girl (laughs) <laughs> I have some really controversial takes when it comes to Star Wars. Like, really, yeah. I do. I watched well, was episode kids, two. Yeah. I've seen that movie like more times than any other movie 
from the Star Wars universe. I genuinely really liked it when it came out because it was the perfect age of like, I love melodramatic romances. Mm. You know, I was like a, a young teenager at the time. It was just, you know, the, the dramatic music, the heel turn, it was everything to me. So it's not the, it's just that I, you know, that kind of like very extreme, like child, like kind of precocious acting a little bit like an adult, a little bit like too childish. I'm just, you know, I grew up in an Asian household. Kids are meant to be quiet and obedient. And this is the opposite of that. And I was just like, somebody needs to like tell this kid to calm down. You know, like we need to take the candy away from this kid and maybe not let him adopt this monkey, which is probably like... I was just, yeah, it's it probably was, not it safe for a lot. child. Like, it, it definitely took away this. from what I liked about the movie. You know, like I loved everything about it, but every time that kid would show on screen, I'm like, I don't want to hate you, but like, well, obviously, I like I, 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 I expected because of the cartoon. I was like, oh, of course, Bridal. I think, yeah, I think just, I, I think it was just, I think it was yeah. just the actor. I'm, I'm sure he's a great kid. Well, he's an adult now. He's probably in his twenties <laughs> now. I'm sure he's a very nice person, but I didn't love the actor playing it, and maybe it threw me off because he did seem so much older than he was. And when I looked up, oh yeah, he's 13. He's supposed to be like eight or nine, right? And I'm like, oh my god, because he's so tiny in the cartoon. And he just seemed. How old little... is the character supposed to be? I think he's like eight, or, right, Jay? Like eight or nine, Spritel, I think. Something like that. Yeah. I don't think he ever, he ever gets. In the cartoon, he's age. super tiny. Like, you know, this actor was tinier than. In the cartoon, he's super age. tiny, but he also does yeah. stuff like Steel Speed's car a lot. So. Right. It's true. It's true. Yeah. Yeah, well, I think, I think all, he, I'd, I'd say he's between was eight. like driving Rex's car. Yeah, so I, I, yeah like true. I'd say like I'd say he's between like eight and ten, eight and ten supposedly, yeah. and but in um here, like I said, the actor was like thirteen, going on fourteen. Um, so I and I remember seeing somebody else look at the, there were an, an, another actor. So like, oh yeah, he's got like he's like a forty year old in the body of a thirteen year old, which she came across as sort of like I'm an adult trying to play a kid, you know, something like that's that. Exactly what I hate that's, about. But I, yeah. so like, I kind of love from, that. Like, the 80s and 90s yeah. where, like, people yeah. do that. Well, that's why I'm saying I just don't I, feel any nostalgia with that. You know, yes. like, I didn't grow up mm-hmm. watching those movies, so when I see that, I'm like, God, these people are so annoying. Like, this is why I'm like, this is why people don't like white people. Like, you guys are. This <laughs> is oh. Annoying, but, you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that is Ooh, the best raise one your ever. Children, right? What's kaching? <laughs> kaching. Yeah. Uh, well, like I say, I felt like this was a direct homage to Corey Feldman, and uh, and so Maybe you so. know all the, the two Corys, yeah. and so and also in the the TV show, I thought it was dual purpose. And, uh, I was so into it. You know, I know Jay has to leave in about half an hour, and we're only we're only like the first third. So let's let's try move move along a little bit more. But uh, anyway, so then there's a knock on the door, uh, and we see royalties taking uh, revenge on the, the the racer family with a lawsuit and all kinds of stuff. And then there's a knock on the door, and it's this inspector detector and uh, Rex, uh, not Rex Racer. Racer, Racer X, X played X. by Matthew Fox and um I love you know you know Matthew Another Fox do, doesn't act, I know same here you know multi-generational uh he doesn't act anymore I was looking at his IMDB page he's been gone he's did a few things after Lost but he's he cashed those Lost checks and decided to live his life he yeah person, he yeah. did but he you know like talking about the other actors Vincent Vaughn Henry Rollins is like Racer X must be a tall dark you know straight standing uh guy in a dark mask and, well, and although, you have to have someone with an expressive lower face yeah someone <laughs> with a chin that says it all it's, and, it's just like love trouble you need someone who can act entirely from the nose down mm-hmm, yeah <laughs> and i think matthew fox pill, yeah. fills the role perfectly good old, good old foxy yeah yeah um but anyway he's come to the racer family with an incredible offer they know that the royal tins are uh, crooked and Rain, the racer that has been brutalized. Uh, I forget his name in the the it's film. Taijo, Taijo, yeah, Taijo, Taijo, Taijo has Taijo. has yeah. the goods on Royalton, but his his racing family is in decline. So they must win this race, and then they'll be big enough so that they can are safe and they can out Royalton. Uh, yeah. And then they're yeah. like, but but there's no more races on the schedule. And I love this part. It's like, oh, it's off road. And yeah. Pops is like, no, not that trash off road. We yeah. lost one son to off road. I won't lose another. Yeah. <laughs> and he's uh, entirely right. justified. We find out. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I don't yeah. blame him. For yeah, the yeah. real races in this universe are involve things like bee catapults. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, and 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 so the racer and Trixie, uh, Speed and Trixie, come up with this. And, 
incredibly dumb scheme. Like they're going to say <laughs> they're going on a skiing trip. And meanwhile, they'll actually somehow take the Mach 5 to the skiing trip yeah. and enter the race. Uh, and I love how they another just... homage to the cartoon. There was a big desert race in the cartoon, yes. which is great, too. Yeah. Yeah. The but they just cut. I love that they cut from this this really lame scheme to them in the race. No, no need to show. Yeah. No <laughs> need to show that scheme well, playing out. But also earlier on, uh, when Rain was being beaten, Race Rex saved him. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, so, so yes. They, they're familiar with each so other. So he's tall, other. dark, yeah. mysterious, yeah. and a good guy. And oh, I just looked it up. And the Sprite. car. Yeah. It, and by the way, I looked at Sprite. It was supposed to be seven. In oh. the, car, in the cartoon. So yeah, that's why this kid just played. It was too old for me. I was like, hey, he played it. It, was, it should have been younger. Anyway, anyway, go ahead. Um, so, so we get to this off-road race, and you know, we meet all the other. You know, here's where the wacky races. This is of, yeah, this is very wacky. Like race. they have it. all I these other Viking racers, yeah. you know, femme fatale racers, the snake racer, right. and uh, we are off. Oiler, yep. Yeah. We're off into it's a two day, five thousand kilometers. It's yeah. like, which is insane, by the way. That doesn't even make any sense. No. Um, you could, you know, race across america and that that's uh, a very long race but the first segment is in the desert and you know a little bit of pod race a little bit mm-hmm. of the pod race uh yeah. homage here i feel um but, but again uh, the, no it's really it's the cartoon had a desert race yes and i remember like yeah. there was, and they had all this stuff going on things like this going on with the different racers trying to attack him and all this other stuff so yeah yeah so that's very much but you know it's just like, like in this universe, the cars are allowed to hop over other cars. And, you know, they have yeah. the James Bond scene where she shows him all the improvements they've made to the Mach 5 with, you know, it yeah. has blades, it has, you know, parachutes, it has all Re- this stuff. Reinflatable <laughs> tires. And, yeah. yeah and, yeah. and uh, spikes and stuff. And yeah. oddly enough, given the foreshadowing, all of these are called into play as, mm-hmm. as it, during this road race, which is just, I don't even like... And I, I love that Royalton was like how he bought out all the other drivers, like like the, the prizes he would give, like <laughs> one get done, but the Vikings get furs. And they're like, yes, yes, furs. <laughs> how rich excited. must he be? He's buying out every single race. Yeah. Like, yeah. Damn. Race like itself. diamonds? Yeah, yeah, diamonds, yeah. The race itself is so over the top, though. And it, it really, it, it's got the same ridiculousness as the races in the cartoon where you've got stuff like car acrobatic team who, yeah. Yeah, for, for car, acrobatic team. Yes. car acrobatic team are, yes. are led by captain terror and they're the main villains for a lot of it and <laughs> their cars do tricks that's their I thing i love it that's why they're, it's um and game. like that's what this race feels like yeah 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 oh well, it's at one snake, point, snake oiler or whatever like he yeah. like throws like a live snake at somebody and i'm like yeah. that's just been waiting in your car this whole time <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, okay dedication uh but that's yeah, only name that's only the first day of the race. The next day, what yeah. is it? The ice, the, the ice, Maltese ice cake. Well, well, the Maltese between, but, yes. ice cake. There's between, something in between. Between, between, the, between the races, races. Oh, there's a whole. Between the races, the family there's finds out what's going on that they're over there. So they show up. A non Like, yeah, yeah, they show up and they're like, "What's happening?" To me? Like, okay. So they all days. stay in this big hotel, and then they get attacked by ninjas. Or in this ridiculous fight scenes are great, and like, uh, uh, pops comes in. and I love like the focus on the. He's an ex-wrestler. Look at that ring. Yeah. So he takes it and he's like, and that's what I love about facial reactions. As he's ridiculously spinning the ninja around in the air, we we go to Trixie and mom and just totally all in. They're just like, oh my God. Like, yeah. Their reactions yeah. are great. I love it. I love it. That um, hotel gives us two of the three best lines in the entire movie too. Non-joking there's, there's one, the, I'm assuming. <laughs> <laughs> one is the is that a ninja? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the other one is is earlier and is is Emil Hirsch just absolutely all in delivery of the line. Inspector detector suspected foul play. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no one yeah, should be able to say that well. <laughs> yeah. Right. So once you know, once the family realizes what's going on, that they're part of the team. You know, Racer X is on the team. Speed is on the team. And uh, I'm. Hi, Joe. Hi Joe. Hi, Joe. Hi, Joe is on the team. So they are, um, you know, they're like, you know what? We're going to bring down those royaltons. So we're going to, you know, let's go fix the car, Sparky. Um, and it's like Team Taijo, basically. Like yes. He's the leader, but they're with him to support. Yes, yeah. yes. Team Taijo. And then the ice cave, the Maltese ice caves. Malta's a rock in the Mediterranean. It does not have ice caves, but sure. Um, <laughs> this is where Rex died. Yes, and this is where Rex does. So it's you know there's even more uh, drama as as Speed is trying. You know, as, as you said, Jace and his his brothers, um, uh, you know, tires, and you know this is another just 
crazy, over the top, um, you know, uh, and oh, by the way, uh, Taijo has been uh, did, did, you know, put out of commission by having snake venom dropped into his lips as he slept. Yeah. So he's not quite fit. So who is uh, racing? Yeah. Um, Trixie. 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 And, uh, oh, she, you, know, you know, Chrissy De Ricci, I mean, we, we haven't talked enough about her. I mean, you know, she love was her. spotting in the helicopter, uh, yeah. her pink helicopter prior to this, but now the, the racer family's up there. And, you know, she's great. I mean, I... I uh, you know, I the Wachowskis always give great roles to, to women in their films, and, and Trixie is no, you know, she's the girlfriend, yeah. but but it's very clear she is so much more, and mm -hmm. she has her own agency, and, you know, she fills yeah. in just great for Taijo, um, until they come to a place where there are no cameras, and uh, they do, now Taijo's ready, he's ready for action, and then there's a big fight scene, okay. uh, big uh, the, all those Dick Tracy Gunsels show up, and they took uh, such a large lead ahead of like, the other yeah. team. They yeah, had this whole sequence. I was like, wow, they are really, yeah, they really went ahead of it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but then Ty Joe is, is able to get back in and, uh, you know, uh, speed is, does some, the craziest maneuvers yet of jumping his car over the ice. And, uh, by the way, so many cars are going off the cliffs and I'm like, well, there's a lot of death. And then you yeah. see you a see little parachute, parachute yeah. or the foam ball. They always show yeah. that they escaped nobody and died. some, nobody yeah. died. Nobody it's like died. in all the G.I. Joe cartoons, you get like 40,000 parachutes up here. With like people <laughs> are it like, makes sense though, cause if they're like all these like highly sponsored racers mm -hmm. like you think you'd want a lot of like you know safety precautions because yeah, you gotta sure. you can't just kill these people like <laughs> yeah they, yeah how are you gonna make money yeah. Yeah. yeah and as you say he pulls up at the last moment so uh you know he doesn't surpass the uh the rex racer record yeah but um which is a great little character bit so yeah. all right now you're right we've had our two acts we've had our first two races and now the pre but speed didn't qualify for the for the Grand Prix. Well, well, in the in the desert race, uh, so Team Taijo wins, and then we immediately find out that Taijo was sort of uh, beholden to his father, and and they were connected to uh, Royalton. So they sort of did this whole scheme just mm. so their stocks would rise. It was a whole money thing. So Speed and the family's pissed about it. They're like, oh, we Taijo totally used us. We know he's a good guy, but holy cow, we can't believe he did this. Um, and that's like, so, the, so like you said, he's speeds can't do this big grand prix, but oh, oh. His sister, Hortico, his the sister, sister shows up. Yes, Hortico shows up and she's like, There's a little bit of a loophole here. We could, uh, we can, Which... since you're on Team Taijo, technically you could still claim entry into the grand prix. So that's how he gets it now. Which is great. So it's nice to see that. Oh, oh the Jesus cat. Christ! Oh, I was like, I was like, it's not like a speed racer moment. Right? Like, yeah, <laughs> my the cat decided. Lucy decided to join the podcast. Um, awesome. But yeah, so now, uh, so now we're set up for the final act, the final race. And but before that, there's a moment. Meanwhile, speed, speed has noticed that yeah. racer X uh, drives like Rex drives yeah. like Rex, which I thought was the best. That, oh, yeah. that was just the best thing, you know, and you, you showed up two years after Rex died. You are my brother, aren't you? And Matthew Fox takes off his mask and doesn't look like Scott Porter. Mm -mm. Uh, like, nope. What Sorry, I'm not. No. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. Nope. And he's like, oh. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Speed is like, you know, crest followed. He's like, well, oh, wow. I was so convinced you're my brother. He's like, you're not. Uh, which I still, it's like. I mean, what I, I guess I try to understand why Race Rex did what he did, why Rex did what he did, and it's just like, that's your family, man. That's great that you're hanging around to make sure they're safe, to, but it's like they miss you. Tell them you're the brother. It's like it's like. Well, hey. you think about that race through the caves. Like how traumatic yes. that must have yes. been for yeah. for um for Speed to like yeah. experience yeah. driving through something that he had no idea his brother survived through. So he's like, yeah. okay, so if I die here, like he if he's following in his brother's footsteps, yeah, like, yeah. What if he dies in that cave? Like, yeah, damn, dude, come on. Like, come on. Yeah, it's like. But I mean, that's why I say. That's why I say. Uh, you know, we we argued about this a little bit when we talked about Popeye because I thought it was a very good script by Jules Pfeiffer. Others did not feel the same, but uh, you know, I think this is. Uh, I think, but well, I said it all held together. But I, you know, this is a really tight script. Yeah. You know, there's no extraneous elements in it. Um, you know, the story is very. Uh, you know, like like Jay is saying, it has a real structure to it. Mm -hmm. Um. 
And uh, so, yes, all are reunited for the Grand Prix. Yeah. And, uh, you know, in the theater, when you're watching this, you're just, I mean, the racing scenes, again, are just so. They're, oh. the, the courses are, the tracks are incredible. Oh, yeah. That's the, why it made like loops for and... such a fun video game. Like, it was, it was a, you're really watching a video game. And when I play it, I'm like, oh, my God, this is really fun. You're doing these leaps and these turns, these spins. And it's like, oh, so cool. So much. Yeah. This is the same thing. Great. great and, track. you know, Royalton thinks that he's got it all figured out now. You know, Ty yeah. Joe's family has sold out to him and the racers have been, you know, eliminated. And the Grand, he's the fix is in for the Grand Prix. But then there's commotion on the track. And, you know, what's the, oh, wait, wait, wait. I forgot. I forgot the scene where the family says we have only two days to fix to make the car yeah. to make the car and then yeah. we get this beautiful montage of the whole yeah. family pitching and even mom and she's making peanut butter and jelly sandwiches for them while they were and that ah oh. i mean what a that's, mom that's the most important job what saying. a mother but she's in there comparing it to the montage of the super super corporate super polished yeah. stuff going down at royalton with the the guy who's considered a shoe in for the victory yeah. The old star, race stars coming back. Cannonball. Cannonball, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, you know, we, we see there's another array of villain, villainous cheaters. Um, and what, what was the name? Uh, well, anyway, there's the commotion. The Mach 6 yes. is at the end of the race. Uh, Spritel and Chimchin are not in the trunk this time. Like, Thankfully. thank God. <laughs> um, it's but so weird that a race car has a trunk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and, also, like, didn't that and then slow they just down? take it everywhere. Like, like any why? weight slows you down, and yeah. you're gonna throw a monkey and a child into the trunk. <laughs> Damn, like you're really, you're really screwing your brother over here. Like, come on, dude. <laughs> but, That's great. That's um, great. but 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 at the last moment, the uh, the 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 racer. What are they? What is the name of the gadget they give him? Uh, it's a spear hook, yes, for it. That's spear yeah. hook. Yeah. Like his car is equipped with a spear hook, um, which he doesn't want to use. He wants to beat him, you know, yeah. unfair and square, but not use the spear hook. Um, so here goes the Grand Prix. And I mean, again, it's impossible to describe in a podcast what these look like. Like you just have to experience it. It looks just like the, spe- the feeling of being about two years old and running around your house with handfuls of matchbox cars yelling vroom. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, or like you're doing playing a racing game on a giant yeah. IMAX screen, mm-hmm. you know. I mean, I, I watched this as I'm sure we all did on the TV, but man, you have to see this movie on the biggest screen possible yeah, for like, ah, uh, it, it's just you know so impressive. Um, and you know, speed is you, you know a movie I love is Ford Ford v Ferrari. And, um, you know, there's only certain things you can do in a racing movie. You show the driver in his helmet looking tense. Um, driver uh or and then you show his foot on the pedals so you know it cuts from speed's face to you know his his white leather boots uh crush doing the pedals you know as he's leaping and the car is chock 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 over <laughs> love it I and i'd be surprised if this movie inspired like fast and furious is craziness like <laughs> the way like the driver right. is like this is how i want racing to be i want yeah. them to be doing flips and stuff <laughs> yeah. and like yeah. sliding and like all the oh. yeah yeah for sure um but uh it looks like speed's gonna win and so the villain is like i'm time gonna to use cheat. this time to cheat with the spear mm-hmm. hook and I just, I, you know, and then again, it's like, like all the crazy things that happen in this movie, but it'll be that one element that it's like, oh no, he's got a spear hook. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's like, and so the cars are locked together and like, you know, spinning around the track. And how is that speed? photo finish moment. Like, photo finish. Yeah. But speed, very clever. And uh, the, how does he defeat the villain? He sees. He uses the force. He uses the yes, he well, stays he the course. The, media, the, lips, yeah. the cars at a moment where the camera will a camera will catch what's underneath them. And and yeah. everyone who is watching live, which is apparently the whole world, it's like oh, yeah. it's a spear hook. <gasps> Royalton then, cheated. Royalton yeah. cheated. And honestly, but, who's surprised? Like, yeah, right. I right. Know, but but then he's stuck and his car's not starting and he doesn't know what to do. Pops knows what to do, but he can't communicate with him. But then Sparky, he does use the force. Sparky, he uses the force. It's a totally loot way. He's like, he hears Rex in his voice. He, he, Rex way his back voice. in that opening montage, Rex yeah. would tell me, listen to your car. It'll tell you what it needs. Yes. Yeah. And the car yeah. the car had Siri, thankfully. It was like, why didn't you try that? <laughs> 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 try this. It was like, oh, I'll try that. I'll go to fifth gear. Sure. And um, yeah, no, he hears Rex's voice and he listens in. And, he, and, he, and you yeah, see, like, how do you see fifth gear? Like, yeah. 
Oh, it says and five just, on the on the gear shaft. Pop the clutch or whatever, you know, like <laughs> basically the sense he pops the clutch, you know, and it's like, all right. And off he, he goes. starts up again and he takes over and yay. And, and then, then we like, see all the things that were foretold. We see. Speed wins. Sparky Speed. gets some milk. Trixie gets a kiss. Sprite gets a trophy. Royalton in jail. Yay. Yes. Yeah, so and <laughs> then we see headlines. Sprite gets, gets the trophy. Um, headlines like, <laughs> like crime does not pay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And then okay. the final scene oh. of Racer the reveal. X. Yeah. The reveal. When the inspector detector turns to Racer X and says, one thing, why didn't you tell them that you were really Rex Racer? Mm-hmm. Honestly, the yeah, question why? we all had. Yeah, why? <laughs> mm-hmm. And he why? just, and he says, that's because why. I didn't in the cartoon. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Because we got to lay out the suspense there, for because a second be, movie. That maybe there came. will be a second speed well, race. Well, it was definitely planned. So, yeah. So we do see a little background. He get, got plastic surgery to look like, yes. like Fox, to look like Foxy. And um, so Tell there you, was a possible sequel. My face during that scene in the movie, yeah. like absolute shock oh really <laughs> i was like oh it's not the brother <gasps> it's yeah. the brother <laughs> yeah so, a very gullible viewer. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. Oh, that's that's you know, I'm very jealous. I'm very yeah. jealous, Therese. You know, I was there for I am your father, Luke. So it's good yeah. to have that with those moments sometimes. Same, yeah. <laughs> so there was a possible sequel right after it came out, even though it didn't do well in the box of what they talked about. Uh, Rain asked them why his character is so happy for speed winning. And the Wachowskis were like, well, uh, in the next film, you know, Rain, Rain you know, we'll answer that in the next film. And um, Rain said he had, was hired for three years. Like a lot oh of them God. are, right? and then while noting that that doesn't guarantee a sequel will be released, um, Christina Ricci also like wanted to do it. Um, and she wanted to. She was like, "Well, I hope we do come back, and I hope that I have more to do and more action scenes for our character." Um, they they had a great story in mind. Joel Silver and Lewachowski said they did, uh, and then even in 2018, Emil Hirsch stated. In a tweet that the sequel for Speed Racer has a script that's been written. <laughs> so who knows? So, I mean, so years later, why not? You know, so but. this this movie. I mean, I wouldn't even say it was divisive when it came out because the people who loved it were so in the minority, such as myself. Yeah. You know, we were almost forced to go into hiding because it was such a huge. It was a horrible, horrible flop. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and the Wachowskis. You know, they've never. I don't think they've really recovered from it yet until the the um, the make Matrix Four. Um, but, you know, 10 years ago, there was a, hey, what about Speed Racer? And, uh, you know, I was reading this this EW debate about it, and Krishna Nashawadi, who is, like, a really respected entertainment writer, still hates it. And he's just like, and it's just, you know, there's God. nothing. He's like, and there's nothing even interesting about it. And I'm like, really? Really? Yes. Wow. Nothing? No, it's un- it's, and I'm like, are you, what? Are you on, like, First of all, like, any movie sedatives? with... Hero Sonata, like oh uh, yeah, who's barely in it, which sucks. Right, but like yeah. Well, that's the whole plot with yeah. the like why Tejo's yeah. family is like trying to make it back because they're getting pushed out by mm. uh, Musha Musha Motors or whatever. Like that's like the whole like reason why they betray them. But anyways, here yeah. Sonata. But like, so J- Jay, 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 because I know you got to run a little bit. But uh, yeah, what what I mean, what do you think has been the trajectory of this film uh, uh, as it is rediscovered? Uh, and made into a cult film. I mean, I think it's a film that came out way before its time. You were talking about kind of the cynicism that didn't really allow for people to take it at face value. And I think we're in an era now and have been for a few years where people actually appreciate the kind of film that Speed Racer is. Uh. So that's been huge. Um, I think also when they weren't seeing it in theaters and immediately in the aftermath of The Matrix, people have been better able to step back and look at it in context and really look at it, look at what it's doing, look at how revolutionary it was for its time. Like it, it feels like really a film that came out five or 10 years before there was a critical audience that was really ready to understand and appreciate it. Yeah. yeah. And, yep. and I, I think, I like I say, I think if it came out today, well, uh, I think if it came out today i think people would be just more ready for yeah. this this kind of trans realism um it would still be divisive but i think it would be i think you'd, yeah. you'd see a much much stronger positive critic and again i'm saying specifically critical voice because i think there have always been people who loved it but there's there's this whole wave of of critics like about my age i was so it came out in 2008 i was in my early mid-20s when it came out now it was before i was writing like who are 
who are now more established critics who are going back and saying, okay, and now I'm going to vindicate Speed Racer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah. well, I mean, that was a time when a lot of critics were basically white dudes. I mean, yeah. let's be yeah. real. Right? Well, like, we're old yeah. white dudes. They're like, it's mm-hmm. old white guys who, you know, I've been in rooms with these critics who don't mm-hmm. like movies because, you know, it's not whatever, Citizen Kane. Like, yeah. come on, guys. Like, mm-hmm. come on, let's move forward a little bit. Like, yeah. they, it, the voices have really been suppressed. Like it, it is until mm-hmm. until like pretty recently that you see like more diverse um, mm-hmm. critics and people who just have like an opinion that they should listen to about films that you know that really do like have an impact. Like mm-hmm. this is definitely mm-hmm. an impactful film. Like like we talked about it, it influenced so many other films afterwards. You can see very clear influences. Like. Did, so so everybody didn't hate this movie like clearly it has some kind of like impact on mm-hmm. creators at least you know filmmakers yeah for sure yeah um i mean i do want to talk about obviously there is one fundamental flaw to the film and you couldn't make it exactly the same way today if it was made which is it is completely whitewashed and i mean yeah. now if you announce the speed racer film with a you know mostly white cast all the main characters being white i don't think that would go over very well yeah, and this is why, I mean, I've been talking about this for years now, and obviously being uh, of Asian descent and also a former actor myself, and uh, I've talked about how whitewashed we see it and with Hollywood. We just talked about the critics-wise. Therese did an amazing piece recently about Falcon Winter Shoulder, a Soldier, about, uh, you know, you know, a magic board not having any Asian you know, in Southeast Asia. Um, so what I like to do, Jay, you may not be familiar, I like to recast a modern remake uh, always ethnic usually all asian <laughs> because asian actor you know and it's like i'd like to see them more represented so i do have a recasting all right let's I, let's, I let's see that to, uh, yeah this, let's so. see that recast let me, let me share this screen real quick here uh just gonna go and then share is here yuki still in this uh well i i'm not doing the whole cast so yeah we could say we could say yes he is so, he's yeah. still in <laughs> i love her oh man i've used him in past cast so let's say as speed racer uh he was in um he's now in the new kung fu series eddie Liu. yeah uh, he was All just right, a, yes. yeah he'd be yeah. great speed racer right. come on um now christina ricci's trixie's um there's an actress yes she came from k-pop she was in a band called girls day but she's an actress as well she's in this great series called reply 1988 it's on netflix uh her name is uh e Hayeri. cute Ooh, little trixie come on oh, she's, yeah. trixie. Trixie. she's a really good actress too she's really good um and uh as pops let's get uh benedict wong oh, oh my perfect. god yes. <laughs> yeah. perfect great pops right uh, and as also in the, in the new Kung Fu series, I've seen her in several yes! other things that she came to mind. I see the uh, as, I love her. Yeah, as 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 a uh, mom, uh, Tan King Hua uh, would be great as as the mom. Be awesome. Um, and Racer X, I want to gender swap this one because why not? There's a lot. It's also male heavy. This movie is a lot of Hollywood is. Let's bring her out of retirement, Devin Aoki. All right. Oh my God. I, yes. I, I will have my own. I see from your tabs that you don't yeah. have him in this, and I will yeah. say uh, Stephen Yoon. Oh, sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Stephen would be great. I, yeah. I do think Racer X is a brother. Okay. So, I fair mean, enough. I'm, I'm fair with, with, um, fair enough. With, That's fine. Fair with gender swapping, mm-hmm. but, uh, yeah, yeah. I would go. And as the Stephen. evil CEO, uh, uh Royalton, Mark Dacascos, we've seen him play a jerk, in, you know, in the <laughs> yes. John Wick films. So I think he'd be great over the top. Uh, and speaking of Stephen Yoon in the fantastic film, Inari, if you haven't seen it, also in that film, the young boy, Alan S. Kim would be now. He'd be a spritel. All right. a now he would be a spritel. A spritel for all look of us. Look. Look, at that, look at that cute is little so kid. Cute. I perfect love him. kid. He'd be the perfect spritel. Come on. Uh, yes. And as um, and this is like we have as the as the brother sister. Uh, I'm gonna actually have him as sisters, two sisters, as uh, Taijo and Hodoko. Um, they're both actually Japanese, playing Japanese characters. So look at that, Japanese people. Uh, they're in the recently disbanded K-pop group Eyes One. Uh, Sakura uh, Mi- Mi- Miyawaki on the left as Rain's character, Taijo, and then Hitomi Honda as the sister. Um, you were again, kidding actually. about that K-pop. Um, oh, no, I'm not. Oh, I'm no. in. Oh, Teresa, Teresa I am in. <laughs> I'm in. Uh, and then the last two as Sparky. I feel like he's sort of a comical relief here. Uh, Jimmy O. Yang. Be nice little Sparky. Oh, my God, yeah. Right. Yeah, right. Right. great. And then directed, I don't know if you guys have seen Space Sweepers on twenty on uh, Netflix, a new Korean sci-fi look. Another it's wild awesome. <laughs> Yes, the director Joe Sungo and uh, uh, Joe Sunghee, sorry, and uh, 
he'd be great because like if you watch that film it's very action-packed it's very heavily action but uh so yeah so that would be my uh that would be the 2021 speed racer remake if Ex- i was the casting director so yeah excellent <laughs> excellent um, we, could debate, one, we could debate a couple other ones i've got <laughs> one point of debate on that and only one, what's that which is that i would i would cast paul sun young lee as pops oh, oh my god yeah yeah, yeah. You know, that's I think that's a better cast because he he could probably embody the kookiness of Pops. Like, you know, he looks yeah, like the cartoon yeah. version. You're like, right. He, yeah. He you looks like that. he just brought they, they brought that person to yeah. life and gave him yeah. a beard. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. he's yeah. got the credentials to play he's, like he's, a father. He's, he's absolutely convenient. got the credentials. Yeah. 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 Kim's convenience, yes. of course, he's a star. And yeah. yeah. Just, just shave his beard. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. I, I'll yeah. see to that. Wow. We will have him and Benedict Wong in in the final readings for Kim. Yes. Yes. We can put Benedict Wong in as another character. He can be Inspector. Yeah. Or oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, he could totally we can, make it all the cast, or even yeah. the bad, even the bad guy. What's his name? So, <laughs> the, the uh, you know, setting That's aside, annoying. setting aside though, um, you know, the whitewashing of this film, um, uh, I do think it's practically perfect, and it's a masterpiece. And um, I, I just, you know, like Scott Pilgrim has completely been rehabilitated. Now everyone's like, oh yeah, this movie was really great and really sums up an entire I era. I love that film. Right. No, yeah. I know. We all knew it when we saw it the first time. Um, I so thought that was still... a perfect film. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Ooh, it's really more about the cast about than it is yeah. about the actual Well, film, I'm, it's, I'm it's more of the actors that I have some Oh, oh that the actors right. have issues with. Okay, I see. Okay. okay. All right. Fair enough. The movie itself, uh, good. I yeah. do think that that Speed Racers moment is yet to come. Uh, a little bit. Um, I think we are in the 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 uh, the. the, the I think we're in the uh, pace car. You know, the car that goes out around the track and sets the pace for the race. I think we are <laughs> in the pace he's in car. The, he's in the little lit car. Yes, for around. this. Uh, and uh, you know, in our in our admiration for this film. Um, yeah, I don't know, Jay. Any any final thoughts? Though I mean, I can I can I I feel like the Jordan Gibson and I have been running around with a pitch for for turning it to comics for like the last seven or eight years. Um, so I have my, my, my sort of where it could go or more in that, but yeah, seeing, I think, I think we're, we've, we've been and are continuing to see sort of a critical revival around Speed Racer. And my main hope from that is that it will eventually come back to IMAX theaters because having missed it in those is, is, is one of the great regrets of my life. Right. And I'll say also, I noticed on my, as I mentioned on Twitter that it's not even out in 4k for home video oh, yet oh, yeah. and there's actually a, a twitter account that's called is speed racer in 4k yet so <laughs> and, and and you know what i uh i'm you know i watched this for free but it was on tubi and with ads and you know, ads. It's, and it's not on netflix anymore and it's not on hello obligatory comic beat insider hbo max dig it's not yeah. on hbo it's max on HBO. it's a yeah, freaking Warner it's a brothers freaking film, yeah. Warner brothers film like i i i i, I gotta say i give props to tubi though because at yeah. least their interruptions their ads aren't as interruptive as fucking I yes. TV is the yes. worst and, to and watch they, anything free on. It just in the middle of a scene, this commercial, no warning, no little thing just pops up. You're like, what the fuck? like out of nowhere. Yeah, they at, at least, least tell you the ad is coming. Is coming so. yeah, and sure. I mean I'm gonna go back and watch it a few times. This is yeah, when it's on it free. Twice. I'm just like put it, again, it on yeah. put it on Tubi, you know, yeah. while I'm doing yeah. my chores or something. Um so uh yeah I think I think especially what I think when the Matrix 4 comes out, I'm hoping, I hope you know, I mean, who knows how that's going to go? Um, it could go either way uh, for the Wachowskis, really. Because uh, I do think, like I said, I think uh, they're, they're, you know, uh, nobody was has been poised to give them their genius mantles uh, for quite a while. You know, there's because their films are a little are that they, they go over a lot of people's heads. <laughs> they're wildly creative and a lot yeah. of people are not creative like they just. Yeah. Yeah. They won't push their mind. Like, yeah, just accept it. Open yeah, your arms sure. and accept it. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Yeah. Well, yeah. I think we can all say, "Here we come! Here comes Speed Racer." Mm-hmm. I mean, he and, is a demon on wheels. Yeah, and you know <laughs> when the, the the odds are against him. He'll yeah. see it through. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I used to sing, we sing a song all the oh, time. I, 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 well, I love that at the end of the movie, they did the Japanese, the original uh, Japanese version was awesome. I was like, but, yes. Oh, and, the, and the, by the way, the closing credits are also just. Fucking Spritel and Chim Chim. Spritel and Chim Chim. Therese like turned it off. She's like, I, I loved it. I love <laughs> Another knife into my. You're like, <laughs> no, I don't care about after credits in this film. Yeah. <laughs> off. 
Um, so, well, th thank you so much. I'm so glad we got to talk about this movie. Yeah, me too. Um, and uh, yeah, watching. thank you, Jay. For, thank you for Thanks joining so us. Thanks for having me. Yeah, um, of like, course. I'm literally always ready to talk about. Spoilers. All right. Well, I, you got to well, we'll do, do it again next week. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> well, don't ever put aside that that oral history don't ever put aside the idea of that because we got mm -hmm. you know our our new super you know uh hero mm -hmm. superhero scott porter but uh it, i'm telling you it's time is still coming it's time is yeah. still coming well i figure if nothing else i've got a while till the 20th anniversary to yes so there you go mm -hmm. like keep nice. that keep that well anyway until next time i'm heidi mcdonald uh, editor-in-chief of the beat don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you can hear more of our wonderful conversations about misunderstood uh, and wonderful films. So, uh, but you can find me on all social media at Comics Ace, C O M I X A C E. And I'm Jimmy Aquino, the host producer of the comic podcast since 2005, uh, weekly called Comic News Insider. We cover comics, TV, film, and pop culture, all sorts of nerdy things. You can find me online at, at Jimmy Aquino, J I M M Y A Q U I N O, and all the socials. And my name is Therese Laxlin. I am the entertainment editor at The Beat, and I'm also the co-founding uh, creator of Nerdophiles. You can find me at Vampire, B-A-M-F-P-I-R-E, on Twitter, and uh, that's basically it. Just find me there. I'm Jay Editon, writer, podcaster, editor, a bunch of other stuff. You can find me on Twitter as Not Lasers, and podcasting on pretty much all of the social media as Explain the X-Men. Nice, awesome. Nice. Well, until next time, Keep spinning around the track. <laughs> <laughs> and check Hi. your trunk for your brothers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>